Hello everyone and welcome to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? Did you have a nice weekend? That's so great to hear. Now it's time to sing our good morning song together. So let's stretch our arms out like airplane wings and fly to one side, fly to the other side, fly back to the middle, and now let's take our airplane wings into a big circle out in front of us like this. Stretch the circle up over your head and stretch to one side, over to the other side, one last stretch up at the top, and we'll bring the circle back down and sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Circle Time. Before we get started, let's do three things quickly. First, let's turn on our listening ears like this. The second thing that we need to do is put on our thinking hats. My thinking hat is right here. I'm going to put it on top of my head. And today my thinking hat has a zipper underneath my chin. So I'm going to zip it up. And the third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts. How do we do that? Will you show me how? That's right. Boom, 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 boom. So now that we have our listening ears on, our thinking hats on, and our hearts are all warmed up, I just want to give a special hello to Sophia from South Korea. Good morning, Sophia. Thank you so much for watching my Circle Time videos, and I hope that you are having a wonderful day so far. Now, let's get started with the calendar and weather chart. I have my pointing stick, and I'm going to go up to the month first. Does anybody know what the month is called? This month is almost over. May! The month is May, and today is May 24th. So I'm going to move the chip over from Friday. The last time we met, it was May 21st. I'm going to move the chip from the number 21, 22, 23, and put it on the number 24, because today is May 24th. 2021, but you can also say that the year is 2021. Both ways are correct. Now, let's take our counting fingers and let's count the remaining days or the days that are left in the month of May. Let's give our counting fingers a little stretch to warm them up. After today, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will only have seven more days left in the month of May. And then we will say hello to a brand new month. The new month will be here in just a few days. So let's put those seven fingers back up and let's sing the days of the week song together. It goes like this. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to travel down to the bottom of the chart and I am going to tell you the sound that the day makes. So if you know what it is, you can say it out loud with me. This says that yesterday was s Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday, the last day of the weekend. So that means that today is M. Monday. Today is Monday, the first day of the weekday. And tomorrow will be T. Tuesday. But let's go back to today 
and let's sing Today is Monday together. Will you sing with me? Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. And now when we go back up to the top of the chart, we have the season. Do you know what the season is? Spring! It's springtime where I live. And this week, we are going to have a new focus all about springtime, but we'll get more into that later on today. For now, let's go back down to the bottom of the chart and let's sing the weather song together. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? So right now where I live, I have a picture of a sunny day with a cloud on the picture as well. Because when I look outside my window, it's mostly sunny, but there are a few cumulus clouds in the sky. My temperature chart is on orange because it's going to be a warm day where I live. Warm and mostly sunny. What's the weather like where you live? Look outside your window and let me know what you see. Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. Because today is Monday, we have a new letter to talk about. This letter says, Y, Y. Can you make that sound? Now let's make that sound together. Y, Y. And do you know what letter this is? Y. This is a lowercase y. Y says Y, Y. And now it's time to guess what is inside of the letter box but it actually is not inside of the letter box today. You will see why in just a few minutes. I do have something that starts with the letter Y. Y. Here's your first clue. If you think you know what it is, you can take a guess. This is something that you do with your mouth. Your mouth will open up. and This is something that you do when you are tired. You yawn. This is how you yawn. <sighs> you yawn when you are tired. Your mouth opens up, and when you yawn, it's polite to cover your mouth like this. Yawn starts with the letter Y. Y. This is how you write a lowercase Y. Y. One more time. We also have a new number to talk about this week. Take a look at this double digit number. This is the number 25. When you write the number 25, you write two numbers. First you write the number two, and then you write the number five, two, five, twenty-five. I have my piece of chalk to write with, and you can find something to write with, and we can draw 25 tally marks together. But if not, you can just count them with me. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five goes across, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen goes across, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty goes across, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five will go across. Twenty-five tally marks. Friends, I see different groups of five tally marks. 
Let's use our counting fingers and let's count the groups of five that we see. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Five groups of five tally marks makes 25 tally marks all together. And we have more to count today. It's inside of the box. Today, we have to count 25 twigs. And as we count the twigs, I like to line them up just like the tally marks. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five goes across, six, seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen goes across, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty goes across. 21, 22, 23, 24, and the last one, 25, will go across. Five groups of five twigs. We counted 25 twigs all together. So we've learned a new letter of the week, a new number of the week, and now it's time to learn the new sign of the week. This week, I'm going to teach you how to say garden in sign language. Remember, sign language is a language that uses your hand gestures and facial expressions to communicate instead of speaking out loud. This is how you say garden in sign language. Would you like to try that? Let's do that together. You're going to take one of your hands and pop it up through the other, like the plants are growing, and then cover up the plants with dirt, like this. Garden. One more time. Garden. Now that springtime is here and the weather is finally getting nicer, I can spend a lot of time working outside in my garden. A garden is an area in my yard where I grow lots of different types of plants, like vegetables, flowers, and even some fruit trees. But instead of me talking about my garden, how about I give you a quick tour of what it looks like? Come on, let's go. So I talk about working in my garden a lot, and now that the weather is finally nice, I thought that it would be fun to show you what we have growing during the springtime. So right here, we have a very big bed of strawberries growing. The strawberries haven't come yet, but recently we noticed that the little flowers are starting to pop up. And then in a few more weeks, the flowers will turn into juicy red strawberries to eat. Right here, we have another one of my favorites. We have some snow peas that are beginning to grow right here. These are the little pea shoots. And if you notice, we have this fence right here to work as a trellis because as the pea shoots get bigger, they need something to climb up. And in a, about a month or so, this whole fence will be full of peas for us to eat. Right here, we have our bed of garlic. So back in October was when we actually planted the garlic cloves in the ground, and then we covered them with straw. And then in the early springtime, the garlic started to sprout up from underneath the straw. And now, look at it. And right here we have our bed of greens. We have some kale at the top, followed by some radishes, some lettuce, and some spinach. Here we have some potatoes that are just beginning to pop up. So back in April, we planted the potatoes in the ground and then mulched them with straw and some hay. And now you can see that the green, the leaves from the potato are starting to pop up. And then later on in the summer, they'll be ready to harvest and we'll dig underneath the ground and harvest the potatoes. 
Right here we have another one of my favorite early springtime vegetables, asparagus. And as you can see, they're starting to sprout up and they're ready to be harvested. Right here we have two plum trees. And you need two plum trees because you need them to cross pollinate. A few days ago, they were covered in beautiful white blossoms, but recently the petals have fallen off. And if I look very closely, now that the petals are gone, I can see little tiny baby plums that will grow bigger and bigger until they're ready to be harvested. Right now we are inside of the hoop house, which is a little mini greenhouse that stays really, really warm and retains the heat. And back in April, we planted spinach and arugula. We have some radishes and lettuce. And compared to all of those greens that were planted outside in the beds, these are much further along because the hoop house was able to keep the warmth and we were able to plant them earlier on in the season. Do you have a garden where you live? The really cool thing about a garden is that it can be anywhere as long as you have soil and sunlight and water. Plants will grow, but we will talk more about that later on this week. For now, let's check out today's work. For today's work, you will need a pair of child-friendly scissors, some flowers that have the stem, a small bowl, a funnel if needed, a pitcher or a glass of water, and a vase. Today we are going to be arranging flowers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some water into this vase. Now the top of the vase is very thin. This actually used to be a bottle of sparkling water and I saved it because I wanted to reuse it in the summertime and spring to add flowers. So because it has a very thin, small opening, I'm going to be using a funnel to pour the water in. And this will help the water from spilling out the sides. So I'm going to take the water and pour it into the funnel. So that once the flowers are inside, they have water to drink. And the next thing that I'm going to do is start preparing the flowers. So I like to just trim the end of the stem right down here so that it's fresh and I can also make sure that they're not too tall to fit inside of the vase. So I'm going to take my scissors and just trim off a little bit like this and then I'll put all the extra pieces of the flower that I'm not using anymore into the bowl. And let's start off with this flower. So these are buttercups. Right now we have a lot of buttercups growing in my yard. And if I line this up to the jar, you can see that this little stem right here and leaf is going to be inside. So I don't need this part since it's going to be inside of the jar. I'll just trim that off and I'll put the stem and the flower inside like this. So now just the flower is poking out. Otherwise, if we had kept this little piece on, that would still be sticking and trapped inside of the jar. What about this one? These have a couple flowers coming off of the stem. And it looks like this one doesn't need to be trimmed. So I'll just put that inside. And how about this one? It looks like this leaf has to be removed. So I'll trim that off, put it inside of the bowl, add this flower to the jar. And as I add more and more flowers, I like to make sure that the stem is fully submerged inside of the water 
Otherwise, the flowers won't have any water to drink. And let's do a few more. Looks like this one needs to be trimmed right here. And there we go. I think that I'm going to keep my arrangement simple today with only a few flower stems. But if you'd like to, you can add as many flowers as you'd like to your jar or vase, as many can fit. And you can add different color flowers, different types of flowers, whatever you have growing outside or whatever flowers you are able to use. Then I'm going to save these extra stems right here and just add it to my compost bin. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. I would love to see the flower arrangements that you make. And if you would like to share your work with me, you can have your grown up take a picture of your flower arrangements and share them with me online. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Now it's time to sing our goodbye song together. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends, goodbye friends, I'll see you next time. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you tomorrow.